I'm Brandon. Matt. Alex. We are the Weathered Hearts. This is another great episode of the ETX Rock Show featuring Gypsum and the Travelers. From the great state of Texas, this is the latest episode of the ETX Rock Show. Nestled in the piney woods of East Texas, the ETX Rock Show delivers the stories and songs of talented artists of all genres, all styles, from the unheralded and unheard to the legends and beyond. We bring a passion for music and a drive to go behind the curtain with our guests. We focus on all artists, from LA to New York, Nashville down to Texas, and everywhere in between. ETX is our location, not a limitation. Now as always, it's viewers and listeners like you out there that are our biggest support for the show. If you want to contribute to the show, please do so by donating to www.paypal.me forward slash ETX rocks and thank you for tuning in. Wherever you're tuned in, please hit the like, follow, and or subscribe buttons. And now for another great episode of ETX Rock. Hey guys, this is the 226th episode of the ETX Rock Show. Emanating from Tyler, Texas, Jewel Renee, Chris French, Nate McConnell, and Silas Alexander are a brand new foursome with a fresh new sound they describe as indie pop folk. Using an impressive array of instruments from classically trained violin to ukulele, with bass, drums, and guitar mixed in, Gypsum and the Travelers are poised to make big noise in the talent-rich region of East Texas. Having already garnered nominations at the 2017 ETX Music Awards, they are excited about the next step in their journey after going from a from an acoustic duo to a full band. Guys, we are excited to introduce everyone out there to Gypsum and the Travelers. Hey guys, Boston Chris here, and I am your host for this episode of the ETX Rock Show. This is actually episode 226, and it's like February 3rd, and it's hot. Well, not really. It's, I guess, it's kind of chilly today. It's, I don't know. It's I raining. It. It's Texas. Yeah, yeah, it is Texas. We went from what, like uh, 10 degrees to a tornado warning in like four days. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but we are sitting here with Gypsum and the Travelers, really, really excited about this because Jewel and I have been talking about doing this for a long time and it finally worked out and, and it worked out really great too because you and Chris have been a duo for a while yeah. and Nate and Silas just came aboard and now you're a foursome and a full band finally. I know that's really exciting for you. It really is. I've been waiting on this for a really long time. So, yeah. Yeah. And you guys are going to play a couple of songs for us here on the episode. So tell us a little bit about the first one and how it came to be. So Psycho, without saying too much and divulging names, um, I dated someone. And <laughs> at some point during this relationship, uh, they're going to watch this and kill me. <laughs> but um, we were breaking up and they did not want to leave my house, like at all. And I was wow. like, you know what I'll do? Because they were trying to hold on. I was like, no, I'm not doing this. Um, I decided to act as crazy as possible to get this person to leave. And so I did. So it was just an act, right? Yeah, just, okay. well, right. we hope. And <laughs> so I, trust me, I talked to the psychiatrist. I'm okay. <laughs> but um, no. no, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I did, I did this crazy, just, I don't know. I acted insane and freaked him out. And he left. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to write a song about this, I guess. And, and I did, and this is what happened. And so far, honestly, Psycho has been, like, our biggest success. It's a really cool song. A lot of people really like it. And yeah. then I just think about the story behind it, and I can't help but laugh at it. Right. And, and then I have the um, the guy I dated, he messaged me, and he was like, I know Psycho's about me. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> so this, this song is actually a good example of, of, of why you need to watch what you do around songwriters. Yeah. Because, it really is. you know, don't let somebody Taylor Swift you, you know, well, I mean? or you'll end up having a whole album written about you. That's right. And, the album uh, will be called angst. And it's just, it's not, I mean, some of the things may be positive. Some of them may not be. You don't tend to notice the positive as much as when something negative oh, no. happens That's to why you. I write. Negative is what brings your pen to the paper, right. I think. You know I write mean? about, like, we, we, I write about a lot of sad things and yeah. it's because that's like, out of all of life, you have good moments that happen, but the one thing you will always remember is how sadness feels. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I just, I want to write about that because most of the time, everybody, you can find everyone in a state of depression or a state of sadness. Mm -hmm. And if I can reach out to those people and give them something to listen to, to pull them out of that right. and be like, somebody else has been there, I can do this. Yeah. And it's just like, it's so much more for me. Right. So you guys check this out. This is Psycho by Gypsum and the Travelers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Okay, and we are back, and we're talking with Jewel Renee, Nate McConnell, Chris French, and Silas Alexander. Is that right? Or are you going by Silas William Alexander? Uh, I'm just either one. Either one will work. All right. So we'll go with either one. I'm, I'm going to just call you Silas. Is that cool? That works for me. All right. So like I, like I was saying before the song, um, I've been following Jewel for a long time, and she had a great year in 2017 with how many nominations did you have at the awards this year? I think two, maybe three. Yeah, it was a really, really good year for you. Um, I think you were in Fiddle. It's been a while now. Yeah, but it's been it's been a, it's been a. But you also got to perform that night too. Yeah, we did. So um, we got called last minute. I mean, yeah. it was like three days before, and they were like, "Hey, can you perform?" And I'm like, "Yeah, let me talk to Chris and you know see what we can pull together." And I called Chris, and he's like, "Really? They want us?" And I was like, "I mean, they they called me, and I'm I mean like I guess you know." And and we went and we did it, and it was great. And I, I loved it. We had a lot of fun. So. All right. So yeah, it was a it was a really big year and. Um, as someone associated with the awards, I, I co-hosted the last three years, I think. I think your style of music is something that East Texas needs more of, and that's why I think it was cool to showcase what you do on a bigger stage like that. And it's really neat because I've been watching your songwriting evolve over time. And I mean, you're one of the most talented people in East Texas, too. She plays ukulele, guitar violin i think you're classically trained on the violin too right yes i've been playing violin since i was three and i like 15 years of that i was classically trained like taking lessons i've taken from like all of the major um classical instructors here in tyler i there's too many to name but i've taken from essentially all of them so i've gathered my skill set from a lot of different people, and so I've kind of really made it my own from what right. I've taken from them. So as somebody who's, who's you know, not only classically trained, but obviously very passionate about what you do, how hard is it for you to find a chemical balance with other band members? It's been a struggle, mainly just because I'm a classical violinist. Um, you know, in the classical world, it's really easy to just kind of work to, I mean, not in a social standpoint, but in a group standpoint where you're actually working and doing music, it's easier. You essentially, like, you breathe together. That's literally it. Like, mm -hmm. if you can breathe with the rest of your group, you're fine. And, like, me and Chris both are classically trained. I mean, he's classically trained on bass. Um, and that's how we met was through orchestra too long ago. Like, it was a long time ago. Um, and so... Like that's me and Chris play so well together because we started in classical music together, and if you can do that, you can essentially play with anybody anywhere. Right, the it's kind one, of the foundation of what you need for. Yes, yeah. the one hard part about it is the different styles, especially being a violinist. A lot of people don't think that I can do different styles, and I can do anything. You just have to take the time to show me, like, yeah. and talk to me and tell me how to right. do it. And but it's been really fun, like. In incorporating it into my music when I didn't think I could um, and like Silas for example he played he was like can you do this and he played it on the guitar and I was like yeah I could do that it's just somebody has to take the time to be like help share ideas because right. it's hard as the songwriter and the singer and I just I sat here and decided what chords are going to be in the song and I decided what you know lyrics I want and just for somebody to be like okay now come up with violin parts I'm like oh my god no. <laughs> like okay now I gotta tell everybody out there something you may not believe but the song you just heard Psycho here on the show is the first time these four have ever played in a public setting ever together yeah um unbelievable guys um I know that Chris and Joel have been playing together for a long time but Nate and Silas just jumped on board so, how exciting is it for you guys to be a part of this now? Oh, turn to me now? Yeah. Uh, very, because I used to do this with some other people, good friends of mine, and they probably always are going to be my friends. But I'm glad to kind of change up my style that I've been playing, because usually I was playing contemporary Christian, and I play everything, too, from right. metal to jazz. So, I mean, I kind of figured, you know, I can't just stick on rock music. That's what I learned on. I got to learn everything Yeah. in order to do what I want to do. Ever since I was a little kid, I seen, um, um, I think maybe Bon Jovi was a big inspiration and uh, Skillet, which is my favorite nice. rock band. So yeah. I seen it on stage, and I was just like, man, he, they're speaking to so many people because I love their music and 
I just, I'm glad to be with them. I'm glad a friend of mine got in contact with her, and then yeah. she got yeah. in contact with me, and then I'm, I'm just here now. Yeah. And I'm kind of glad to be doing something different. I think the drummer, the percussionist in general, is probably the toughest part of the band to mm-hmm. mix in, because there has to be that chemistry, and if it's not there, you know immediately. And yeah. a lot of times it's hard to get, you know, a percussionist to commit to to learning a new a new Especially craft, our so to style. speak. Yeah. Um, like I knew from the beginning our style can be boring and I need somebody in here that's gonna Jazz and yeah, jazz yeah. it up. Because some. it can be boring if you don't have imagination. But yeah. the minute you have that creative If you don't ability, listen, it can exactly, be boring. Yeah. You can you can add whatever you want to it. Um, and that's why I'm really thankful to have especially Chris in my group, because the bass lines in our genre are extremely Wait till you hear the boring. second song, speaking like, of bass lines. Yeah, oh my gosh. But Chris is a phenomenal bass player, yeah. and he just, like, <laughs> I hear him play, and I get goosebumps, and I'm just like, oh my god, this is my best friend. Like, I can't believe it. Right. Like, it's amazing. It amazes me. And so I'm just like, to be part of this group, and for a genre so boring, and I hate to say that, but it really is. Like, I've listened to the music in my genre, and I'm like, oh my god, it's so basic. Yeah. And to be able to work with such a talented group of people i'm just like this well, what do you consider your genre well we're indie slash americana slash i don't know chris chris always helps me out with this please <laughs> <laughs> i think we fall into a, a pretty it's a it's a wide group of people that it's it's typically soft-spoken kind of poetic folk you know okay. what i'm saying it's yeah. it's mostly like the people who do what we do are mostly acoustic based um i keep saying folk but that's really a that's really, really kind of where it lands it's yeah, like the it's, basis mm-hmm. it's hard to put a, a label on it really <laughs> yeah. i mean because each song is different too you know and i mean like the second song we're going to hear later on you know it's got like a western feel to it almost it's been really hard to label ourselves i have so many people are they ask they're like hey what genre are you and i'm just like mm. I don't even know. Yeah, how do you describe, really how do you describe like, that to a venue that's booking you for the first time? It's really hard. Like, um, they wanted to have us play at Clicks. It was just Chris and I. I was like, are you sure? Like, are you positive yeah. you want us to play? And they're like, yeah, we want you to play. I was like, okay. And then we went and played, and we did really well. And the band we opened for, um, they were they want us to come back and play with them again. Right. And so I'm really excited because now we have a full band. And so I'm like, hey, we get to do more stuff. So. It's cool to see that, too, especially hearing it for the first time. You guys really meld well together. Um, so, Silas, who are some of your inspirations as a guitar player? Oh, man. Um, well, I grew up... Uh, I guess you kind of your first you know experiences the stuff you're exposed to is just what your parents listen to right what your older siblings listen to and um so i was exposed to a bunch of kind of artists i guess in sort of the folk rock genre from like the 70s i grew up you know with a lot of like paul simon james taylor jackson brown wow. like jim croce uh cat stevens was a really big one for me um <clears throat> and so kind of the basis of you know, what I play was a lot of that, and then a lot of the religious music I was around was, you know, Southern Gospel and Bluegrass. Wow. So I've got kind of... What a mix. Yeah, just very, <laughs> very strong, uh, deep roots in just kind of like traditional American music, kind of the Appalachian. So it's going to be pretty exciting for you to see, like, the explosion <laughs> of Americana music here in the 21st century. Absolutely. I hear... Uh, you know, being an artist and being around other artists, you hear so many people bemoaning that they were born in the wrong generation. Yeah. I think I was born in exactly the right generation. The stuff that I'm good at is marketable right now. Yeah. And that's a blessing. So I'm very excited to kind of see stuff being brought into the mainstream that was um, kind of cloistered off to like a couple of weirdos, you yeah. know, for the past like, decades and decades. Completely agree. And what's cool about the whole thing too is it's marketable in an independent fashion too. Yes. You know, so I mean you can do what you want to do musically and artistically, but you don't have to be signed to a label for people to hear it. You Absolutely. Know? That's what's great about today. The thing that Chris kept saying was, you know, he kept coming back to the word folk folk music, you know, and you know, it's music for the folks, you know. Yeah. And the, the thing roots. that we're doing here is um, music being made by ordinary people for ordinary people. Right. And uh, the accessibility of that is really exciting for me. Yeah, and it's cool, too, because it's very modern sounding as well. You know, you can tell it's been made here in this where we're sitting now. 
Um, and that's what's great about y'all. And I'm so excited y'all are here in East Texas. Um, and I hope people, venues, and fans out there will really uh, grasp on to who you guys are because it's really, really needed in, in this area. Like I said in the open, East Texas is so talent-rich, even though I couldn't say region for a long time, but I got it down. You didn't see that in the post-edit, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of talent here in East Texas, but you know, it's predominantly country music. It's predominantly Southern rock or classic rock. So when a fan like myself hears something like this, it's like, dude, yes, this is what we need. Like, this is the glue between those other genres that's needed to hold everything together. <laughs> so it's cool to see you guys here. Um, so as a new band, you're now together, and you're, I'm assuming you're taking bookings now, right? Um, so I've been working on that because uh, I'm kind of like manager too. He's boss lady. Yeah, I'm boss lady. <laughs> like, literally, he texted me, and he's like, what time we jam in boss lady? I'm like, oh, let me ask the guys. <laughs> um, but, yes, so we are taking bookings. Um, right now, we have been really working on our set um, to be able to, like, a lot of covers, because what we really enjoy, we found, is we really love covers yeah. alongside of our original music, just because, like, we just, oh, we jam, and we have right. the best time, and they do so well. Um, like, we were doing Michael Jackson the other day, and it was like... And the covers with you don't feel like covers ever, 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 ever. Um, Jewel did a, a, a segment for us at our music outreach program. And to let folks know out there in case, I don't think I've really talked about it much on this show, but um, every Monday we do this thing called Monday Music Outreach at Truman W. Smith Children's Care Center in Gladewater. And um, essentially what it is is an artist will come in and donate an hour of their time and play some music for the disabled children there and so jewel was one of the artists that came in earlier this year and we sat there and listened to her play f for these children and then most of the songs you played that day were covers you, you mixed a couple of originals in but um a lot of the time it was like mid-song before i would realize what song it was um so i would love to hear how from a band standpoint from everybody how do you choose which covers to do and then i mean obviously it's very important just by listening to you. It's, it must be very important for you to put your own stamp on a song. So tell me what that process is like. Um, for me, I've kind of, it's for choosing songs for me. Um, it's things I've listened to in my own genre. I listen to a lot of indie rock. Um, so I pull a bunch of songs from that and I've tried to pull some songs from folk, but honestly the songs I cover don't match my original <coughs> songs at no. all. Um, we, we do, Chris, help me out here. We do a lot. Um, yeah, there's... Uh, you wouldn't tell by listening to us play the covers, but there's a really weird variety of, uh, of songs in there. But what it boils down to, really, is hearing songs, and for us, it's about hearing the potential to turn it into something that we think is cool, because... As artists, it's fun to have creative outlets that don't involve, like, building something from the ground up. Right. It's like, you know, hearing something and being like... It's oh. almost like doing it in reverse from, yeah. the, from the clouds down. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, it's really cool. We've got, um, honestly, we have a couple of songs that are by the same artists. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you would not tell. Uh, just listening to us play them because uh, I, for one, uh, as a bass player by you know trade, that's my home instrument. I basically hate everything that studios make bass players play, or if that's not the case, <coughs> bass players choose to play. Just, just the repetitive nature of yeah, it. Yeah, just really yeah. awful bass lines. It's so bad. Yeah, I. <laughs> can't stand it so i don't stand for it we just change everything <laughs> that's essentially what happens and then adding violin to stuff is, is really cool. awesome i love yeah. it it's great so it and silas has really helped me with that we, we were doing a cover the other day and he was like hey i know a violin part for it and started playing it on the guitar and i was like i can do that like yeah. right now and before this point we me and chris had been covering the song for like a year pretty much and i had no ideas i yeah. did like i didn't even think I could put violin in the song, and then Silas and that surprises me too because I've heard your writing over the years, and I mean it's it's really in depth stuff. It's not just 
songwriting, it's composition in a lot of time, in a lot of ways as well. But we saw that off camera with Silas, you know. You guys are mid-playing, and he's hearing stuff that mm -hmm. needs to be rearranged a little bit. And I love the fact that he's not afraid to say, hey, maybe we should try it this way. Let's put this there and, and that there. Um, so do you feel like just having him there is almost like a kind it's of a, a pillow awesome. almost? Mm -hmm. And when I was choosing who I was looking at being in the band, that was kind of one of the things I was really looking at. Um, Chris and I have been friends for a very long time, and Chris knows he can tell me anything, and it may hurt my feelings, but I'll work from it. Yeah, um, you'll probably write a song about it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Chris hurt my feelings today, you know, whatever. Um, but that's kind of, I was looking for that honesty, because if any group is going to go anywhere together, there has to be that trust and that honesty. You can't, like, I couldn't have Silas being like, oh, well, I didn't really like that, but I'm going to keep it to myself. That would just feed bad stuff, mm -hmm. and so I'm, I'm glad to have Silas And that's going to choke the artistic nature of the band exactly. as well. Exactly, and I, I really want everybody's own styles to come out. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of like really excited, especially for Nate. I feel like you kind of stay in the background right now, but I'm, I feel yeah. like the more that we all become friends, the more we all get to know each other. Like Silas already has come forward and been like, Hey, this would be cool. I can't wait to hear Nate be like, Hey, well, let me do I this. Got tons of things. I got one right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> but as artists, we're always working for something better. And these, this group of guys, like, yeah. That's what we have. And, and I'm as long so as that excited. stays there, as long as you guys understand that you have to pull the rope the same direction, even if there's disagreements, as long as you're traveling the same way, even if you're disagreeing along the way, that's what's going to make you a better band. In and the long one thing run. about like disagreeing is progress. Right. Bottom I line. Completely agree. And I'm like, even if we run into an argument, it's progress. As long as we can pick up and move forward and it's constructive, right. it's good. So yep. I'm really excited about this group. And it's I mean, awesome. you guys are all, you know, musicians in your own right. So I mean, you each have your own, um, you know, input to bring to each part of what you're doing, whether it's a song or a look or a style or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You guys all have to pull together because if you're not, you're going to have one guy wearing pink in the background playing drums, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, think. Nate, I don't think the pink's going to work, brother. You know? yeah. <laughs> Drummers think differently from everybody else anyway. Yeah. I well, mean, so. it's hard to explain. Cause what, are, what are you hoping that comes out of the, the band here, Nate? What's the short-term goal? Short-term? Mm -hmm. Really just... Just enjoy it, yeah. have fun with it, you know, and then, yeah, it was, dude, be serious, but, you know, you can't just, you know, just right. yeah. get with it It can't be regimented just, all just the time. have fun, make yeah. friends. That's why I was here. That's why I ain't going off nowhere, because mm -hmm. I don't want somebody to say, hey, uh, I'll pay you if you uh, you do this gig for me tonight, and then uh, I'll send you home, you know. I didn't, I didn't want that. Yeah. Because I'd been with somebody for so long, a band that I was with before, they were my friends because I knew them before I got with them. So I was thinking, I was like, man, I want to go off, but it's not going to be that enjoyable. It's just going to be money. So. Yeah. And well, as an artist uh, yourself, you know, a musician yourself, you were you said you were in a Christian band. Yeah. Well, What's it like kind of going off into the secular world now? Uh, Does it matter? Well, <laughs> I'm a preacher's kid. Yeah, and okay. You know how <clears throat> we can be, I guess. So, yeah. I don't, I mean, I make my mom so mad sometimes because I'm like, I'm just a black sheep of the family. Because <laughs> I love classic rock. I love rock music, period. I, some metal songs I like. Yeah. I like all that stuff. Uh, I blame it on my grandpa. <clears throat> just like him. And I just met him here recently because he wasn't in our life that much. Um, I met him when I was little. I didn't know who he was. Right. And I just went and seen him at Christmas. That's the first time I really met him. Cool. And I realized how much I get from him. And I'm just kind of like, now that's why Mama was so scared. <laughs> he's done straightened up. He's done straightened up a lot. You know, he's he's gonna be. So all we've right. got we've got the folk and uh, classic <laughs> music from back in the '70s and metal Christian and. Pop and funk and all that. Where are you at with all this, Chris? He's, um, he's everywhere. So Silas actually <laughs> made a really good point about how um, we first start exploring music. And my dad, his dad was a DJ for 20 years. He spun records at clubs for, 
I mean, ever, dude. And this is, my dad's dad is, like, <laughs> Korean War vet. Okay. Like, serious military man has always So had, when you say spinning records, you mean spinning records. Yeah, like, yeah. he throws down. So when my mom and dad found out that they were pregnant with me, my dad just started just slapping headphones on mom. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Like, we... We were going through and just, you know, playing music and growing up, we listened to everything, man. Uh, uh, most of it I can remember is like Metallica and um, a lot of rap, which wow. was interesting. Like, I'm, we're talking Notorious B.I.G., Tupac, Dr. Dre. Wow. Like, we listened to everything. And then we also listen to swing i grew up listening to jenga right heart and Holy listening cow. to big band and swing big bad voodoo daddy is one of my dad and i's like favorite jams and uh they're actually still touring surprisingly so we're trying to go cop tickets to a show uh and then <coughs> i also found my own way through um like jazz and stuff uh listening to coltrane and gillespie and uh, finding my way through bass players, of course, Brucey Collins, uh, <coughs> Victor Wooten, Yako. Uh, there's some new guys out there that are really just funk heavy. There's a guy named Joe Dart that's a really big inspiration for me right nice. now. Uh, but yeah, it, it comes from a lot of places, man. Uh, really weird places. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've been sitting here with Gypsum and the Travelers. This is episode 226 of the ETX Rock Show. Really excited to have these guys and girl here. And um, I, I think a lot of folks out there might want to know where you came up with the name Gypsum and the Travelers. Oh, okay, so um, <clears throat> the Traveler. Hey, um, let me tell the story. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll, it'll, it'll make a lot more sense coming from my side. So okay. I was out with my family normal day and my phone just starts blowing up like we're talking like six texts a minute and i'm like why why so i pull my phone sounds out. sounds like it's, a normal day for me man i, I don't want to live your life then <laughs> that's a no-go but it's all from jewel and she's like i have this idea okay you know i like rocks and 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 I want to be everything. Well, what's in everything? Gypsum. Gypsum's that thing drywall's made out of. And she's like, I I, I just I, I need it. We need this. Oh and I was like, okay, gypsum, cool. And she's like, we need a word. I was like, okay. She's like, I need you to come up with the word. I was like, <laughs> uh, okay. So I went through probably six or seven things, uh, in including but not limited to hobos uh gypsum and the hobos and he was, was a possibility me all of these. um uh, there was another one that was oh gypsum and the vagabonds was almost uh a thing i like the word vagabond it's pretty cool but travelers was just like it's a pretty cool middle ground people aren't going to be confused about what we're about or... people are already confused about gypsum so <laughs> let's get something that like, balances that out so uh yeah it the origin of the name comes from Jewel uh, out. freaking out yeah. and sending me like 8 million texts about, oh my god, I have a name for the band. Awesome. Yeah. Like, if we were in person, she definitely would have been like, violently Probably. shaking my beliefs. <laughs> I always thought it was funny because you already have a cool artist name in Jewel. You know, Jewel Renee or whatever. So when you started coming up with the gypsum stuff, I was like, okay... So, gypsum, how I found gypsum, yeah, the whole rock thing. So, gypsum's a mineral. Yep. Um, Look up the, the hardness scale. Yeah, it's yeah. so it's great. Um, it is in everything, and I was like, I want my music to be everywhere. So, yeah. hidden meanings <laughs> everywhere. Um, also, the root of gypsum is gyp, and <clears throat> that is also the root of gypsy. And one of the, mo one of the first songs I ever wrote was um, called Gypsy. Um, and it's when I grow up, I want to be a gypsy. And my stepmom is in love with this song, right? Every time I go over there, she asks me to sing it. And I'm like, my lifestyle, I've always wanted to travel. I've wanted to do, I've wanted to live that lifestyle. I yeah. wanted to just be free. Um, and also, it was very ironic because Jip 
means to cheat or swindle. And all of my songs are as honest as honest gets. And so I'm like, so many, so much irony I'm doing, I'm using this. And so that's pretty much how it happened. And um, since my name's Jewel, I can't really use that because there's an artist named Jewel. And I'm like, you can Wikipedia find her the first like Google search. And I'm like, so that's not going to work. So the idea now is to make gypsum be more popular than The Rock. Exactly. Uh, so, in Google, because like, I, I think that's the, the, the goal. You know, I'm fighting the Celtics and the Red Sox here, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 but if you go on Facebook and, and type in the word Boston, I am the third thing that comes up in search. Oh, that's cool. Isn't nice. that neat? That is neat. Nice. It's pretty rough. Yes! I need to get there. I'm working on it. We will be there someday. Well, I mean, gypsum comes up immediately now for y'all, so that's always a good thing. All right, you guys have been tuned in to episode 226. This is with Gypsum and the Travelers. And as you guys know, we like to play a game on this show, but we're going to take a brief break before we get into what the heck with these guys. So we'll be right back after this. Hey, this is Cameron Nelson. Thank you for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. Okay, so we are back. As you guys know, if you're tuned into the ETX Rock Show a lot, we like to play a little game with our guests on this show, and it's a lot of fun. And um, we do email every guest we have, and we say check out an episode or two. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they're not surprised about this. I mean, I kind of I knew that it was going to happen, but I don't. I didn't relay that information. <laughs> <laughs> so. So this is called what the heck, and the way this works, guys, is I'm just going to ask you ten questions, and I need you to shut your filters off. So basically, when I ask the question, whatever you're thinking is what I want okay. for the answer. Okay. Okay. You ready for this? Yeah. All right, so this is What the Heck with Gypsum and the Travelers. Okay, if evolution is true, how did the sloth make the cut? Razor sharp claws. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. What does it they do have, with them? No, no, no. They have, they have like, five-inch razor sharp claws that they can swing at, like, 30 miles an hour. You get close to a sloth, they will cut you. No, they move like... Yeah, no, no, no. But if they, if I've met a sloth. If I've met a sloth. You're not a threatening creature, Jewel. But I've met a sloth, <laughs> yes, and it is. stayed in the same. Yeah, you don't even. How do you don't meet even. a sloth? So the Love Can Zoo has there sloths. There is an encounter that you can true. go to. That doesn't mean you met one, though. Well, that just I've means watched you went it. and saw one. I've watched it. And like, it do you know its stayed. name and its family history and all that? Sadly, <laughs> no. Then you didn't meet the sloth. I guess really? I did it. You were in the proximity of yeah, the Yeah, so I watched it, and it stayed. I was 600 feet And then back. I walked away for like 30 minutes, and I came back to these slots, and they were still there. <laughs> well, you're not fancy. threatening at all. And they know the glass is there. Chris, let's go to the Lufkin Zoo and threaten the slots. <laughs> I'm not about to get cut by some slots. All right, so number two. Have you guys ever seen Donald Duck wearing pants? Because I haven't, personally. Okay, so if he never wears pants, why does he wrap himself in a towel when he gets out of the shower? <laughs> well, the theory on this one could be, you know, what what feathers could, you know, like, shape the body a little more, <laughs> and then things could, you know, be exposed. So it's a plumage problem. Yeah, that could be the issue. <laughs> Oh Chris God. had nothing on this. I'm really <laughs> surprised. Because he was all over Razor yeah. Sharp Claws. <laughs> well, as soon as she started mentioning uh, wet feathers, is um, you know, ducks, man. <laughs> I've got some them. interesting in, uh, anatomical features. Yeah, that's <laughs> so weird. This is true. <laughs> um, all right, number three. What do you think cats dream about? Hmm. Killing me, definitely. My cat does. That's for sure. Man, if it's not peeing on musical equipment. I don't know what it is. You have a really messed up cat, so. I... <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's, it's like... You know how long it takes to get the smell of cat urine out of an amplifier? No. Oh my Tell God. us. I don't want to. Uh, we're, talking, <laughs> we're talking like... What's that process like? Uh, soaks. You know, literally getting like a damp towel and just... Getting in there after it. Just getting all in there. And it's it's like a two hour process every time you do it. You have to do it every day for like five days. And then sometimes it works. I still have an app that smells like cat pee. It's just like, what? 
Everybody's like, I'm a cat person. I'm like, then you're Satan because <laughs> cats are literally. Clearly, you have never tried to recover an amp covered then, in you know, cat urine. When Chris comes to my house, like the first thing he does is grab my cat and just like hold it like a little baby. So That's because really he doesn't like, want it to piss on his ass. <laughs> I was gonna say, if I can get to it now, if I can get to it now and like cradle it and tell it that I'm. That's okay. called meeting an animal. Right? Joel. Yeah. He your cat. <laughs> <laughs> Darn slops, man. Jeez. All right, number four. Um, all right, so you are allowed to listen to only one artist for the rest of your life. Oh. Once you choose this artist, all other artists don't exist anymore. So, so who do you choose? Well, I guess. Well, you artist. said skill at first. So artist, that has to. I mean, the artist John Cooper, uh, Jim Ledger, uh, Corey Cooper, and. Seth Morrison, and like but I'm just gonna say Skillet because that's all I listen to anyway. So, who would you say, Joel? That's really hard for me. I guess in this very moment, I would listen to Mount Joy. Okay, nobody else exists now. Yeah, that's um, yeah. Silas, what about you, bud? Uh, who would you listen to for the rest of eternity? Uh, just. Just the song Best Day Ever by Spongebob. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh Best answer ever. I, uh... Oddly enough, I would I would probably choose Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> okay. I could listen to Kendrick Lamar forever, man. Mm. Alright, number five. Um, where is Superman changing clothes nowadays? Oh my gosh. Uber. He just calls, <laughs> he calls an Uber. He calls an Uber. He gets in the back seat, oh changes, God. and then just gets out. Dude, what, if, what if Uber is slow that day though? Like, oh my God. that's kind of a pressure-filled job. I mean, what, he has. what if he can't find a phone booth? I'm just saying. Like, well, this has I mean, always he's, been his problem. He's going somewhere, right? Yeah. It's like maybe instead of phone booths, now it's dumpsters. Like, mm-hmm. crawl Those into, like, industrial-sized... Maybe that's why his suit has gotten darker over the years. That Ooh. could be, like... <laughs> you know, now that I think about they, they it... Keep, the, the they keep talking is, about, yeah. like, gritty reboots. Do yeah. they really just mean, like, trashy reboots? <laughs> <laughs> With DC, I think it's the same thing. Oh! oh damn. <laughs> At least when it comes right. to Superman. Because I, I've, I've been thinking lately, like, is, is it because... Superman movies are really bad now. Is that why they're not making them anymore? Or maybe he just doesn't have anywhere to change clothes. Mm. Bad. It could be both. I think yeah. it's probably because they're just bad. Yeah. All right, number six. Why do you think you need an appointment to see a psychic? You know, this is a question that's actually been on my mind before. Because it's like, this if you're psychic, why, you know when I need to come see you. Why do I need to tell you? What, what's the point? I don't know. Every time I go see my psychic person, like she, I just don't even call her. I just walk in. She's like, I knew you were going to be here today. And I was like, okay, thank you. I need to, yeah. Okay. So I mean, like, I don't know. I've never had that problem. What always Maybe. drove me crazy is if you're a psychic, why do you even need to be like a practicing psychic? Like, What's the need to charge people to tell their future when all you would have to do <coughs> is predict the future? Is predict the future and go to Vegas and hey, I know who's going to win the Super Bowl and here's my thousand dollars and boom, now I've got five thousand and next time you have twenty thousand. Why do That's you need really to work? Good point. That's a really good point. Life questions. Mm. With yeah, I'm story. telling you. All right, all right. Number seven. When dating someone new. Mm. What is the appropriate amount of time to wait before going number two in front of them? Mm. Well, for this last relationship I got in, because there's been a lot, <laughs> uh, it was like, this is really weird too, it was like a month, totally weird, really odd It wasn't at like a Wendy's or something, was it? No, okay, it was just God. like, I don't remember what I was doing, <laughs> but they needed it like, I don't, like... I don't understand. Just doing your mask hair. Yeah, I was just like, but it was it was happening. Now there is Savannah, his girlfriend. I yeah. swear to God, she was like, I was going to the bathroom, and she just comes in and straight up opens my door, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. What is happening? And she's like, I wanted to give you your cat. Drops my, and she's like, Are you pooping? And I was like, Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, Get. <laughs> what are you doing? She's my Which, best friend. Well, the cat was peeing on Chris's amp. It must have been. Well, that's uh, that <laughs> kind of 
bridges <laughs> into my answer for this question, which is practically immediately. <laughs> if I gotta go, I gotta go. <laughs> no boundaries. Like, you, you know what it is. I'm a human. We all poop. Blind Everybody hate. poops. I have to go to the bathroom if you want to come. <laughs> this, is where I, this is where I do my business. Uh, then you take her to a human-sized letterbox. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. No, no be... zero waste. Yeah, zero, yeah. Compost toilet, right What there. about for you guys? Mm, sons? Well, I don't even like talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not, not taking a crap. It's the person oh. <laughs> that oh, man. I hate so much. Anyway, <clears throat> I got with this um, devil... Uh, I lived with her, basically, so, got with her, it was like a week, or, yeah, it was a week, then I went and spent the night with her, she's like, you want to just stay up here, because her mom didn't care, I was like, yeah, I'll stay up here, you know, and, you know, I don't care, I'm just going to say that, I don't care. (laughs) It was good. You don't care about going number two. (laughs) It was good, because she didn't care. (laughs) But then again, if somebody cares, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, well, I don't see you going there, but I mean, you must be going in there when I'm sleeping. So obviously, I know you're, you know, you're going in there to take crap. So why does it matter? Why does it matter? <laughs> so she knocked on the door. She said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm taking a freaking crap. What do you want?" <laughs> but yeah. Then she said, "Oh." Just started laughing and walked away. <laughs> wow, she started laughing. <laughs> Silas, I really want to know your yeah, answer. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, me since too. we just met your partner today, I want to know this answer so <laughs> bad. <laughs> I think is how how's the question phrased again? Uh, uh, are you gonna make me find it again? It's, it's it. what's the how, what is what's the, the appropriate, appropriate amount of time to wait before going number two and five? <laughs> two years, five months, and three days. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Wow. Is that today? No. <laughs> so you well, have like I a running I total mean, of all your firsts. I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that I have ever waited that long. I'm saying that's the appropriate amount. Of time. <laughs> <laughs> but here's here's the thing. Like it's it's my alone time. Okay? <laughs> like I feel you. that's what I care about. Yep. It's like I'm relaxing. I'm enjoying this activity. Just leave me alone. If you're relaxing, you're doing it wrong. (laughs) (laughs) But that brings me to another point. He he had mentioned that he enjoys it. So, (laughs) if four out of five people suffer from diarrhea, does that mean the fifth person enjoys it? Oh. Oh. Yeah, suffer is kind of the key word there. Maybe, Maybe the... Fifth person diarrhea suffers from them. Oh. Ooh. I don't want to know what that means. <laughs> Does it? They just like their blood is emodium AD. I want to blood before that ever comes about. <laughs> I don't want to know that. All right. <laughs> Number nine. Where do you think squirrels go during hurricanes? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I had a pet squirrel once, and I... Oh, so where'd you keep him during a hurricane? He just stayed inside, and he, like, he had this little, like, teepee thing that hung (coughs) from his little cage top, and he would, like, get in there, and he tore holes all in this thing. So it wasn't just one original, like, bedding. It was, like, holes. Did you ever take, like, a fan and blow it in there? Well, we blew on it, and he would get really mad, and you could see him just, like, moving around in there, and then he got stuck in the house and he was just screaming and it was horrible and we had to like dig in there and cut him out it was bad but yeah so so you called like animal 911 or something we were animal 911 <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible and we tortured that I mean we didn't really torture him but we gave him like a coffee you bag heard it once. here first guys Jewel Renee tortures squirrels I know. yeah it's so bad, but we gave him a coffee bean once, and don't ever <laughs> give a squirrel a coffee, coffee bean. bean. Never. Like, it is the worst thing on the planet. Like, he would not stop running around the house. Like, and we're talking, like, not a regular it's size like catnip squirrel. for a squirrel. It was horrible. He's, like, a flying squirrel, so he's, like, this, yeah. his body's, like, this big, and he's got a tail, like, this long, and... Oh, just don't do that. More brownies. That, that story escalated so quickly. So fast. Now you know the reason for this game. You just never know what's going to come out. 
Uh, squirrels. Man, I just imagine that, like people, you know, they just kind of barricade in the trees that they burrow into. So it's like burrowing and then grabbing <clears throat> sticks and then being really confused when the entire structure... It's like if you were sitting in your house and all of a sudden everything, like foundation, the roots... You're all of everything just goes at once, not being torn apart, but everything is just uplifted, and you're like, I did everything I could, and now I'm <laughs> screwed. I'm just laying on my back. Now I am treeless. Less, so, yeah. <laughs> they wait, you know, they go outside their house after Still sounds settled. better than being in her care, though, as a squirrel. You probably. Um, <laughs> You're not getting caffeine overdose, <laughs> having heart attacks more than you or are. Or stuck in your teepee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's nothing worse than yeah, that. That's, our squirrel hated us. He ended up peeing on the walls. Better than his amp. Yeah. It was bad. He, was, he just <laughs> really didn't. <laughs> so, Nate, what's the your answer for that? toilet related discussion yeah, he covered it. Gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he pretty <laughs> much covered it. But but I think he's got a pretty good plan for the squirrel, the, yeah. the FEMA program. I think he just squirrels. needs to learn how to freaking swim. <laughs> yes. Squirrels. I think he just needs to learn how to swim. You yeah. know that you YouTube know? video where the squirrel has water skis? <laughs> 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 oh my god. So the squirrel community uh. has a group of scientists, right? And these squirrel engineers are looking around at all of the materials they have, and they're like, that dude on that video's got freaking skis. What do we have? We have twigs and leaves. Like, this doesn't float on water. We can't stand on this. What's the, Who do we need to talk to in order to get the supplies that this other squirrel has? Because he's... <laughs> going around in a boat, it looks like he's got a great life. <laughs> and we're stuck over here. Hurricane Harvey's done destroyed everything we have. And there's nothing we can do about it. We don't have the resources for that. Alright, so last question of what the heck with Gypsum and the Travelers. And this has been um, requested by our producer, Louise. Um, Alright, so you guys are given an elephant as a band. You have one elephant. Ooh. Um, you cannot give this elephant away, and you cannot sell this elephant. Okay. So what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. uh, elephant burgers. Oh my god, <laughs> man, come on. Oh, we're we're, we're so going to be an elephant, man. <laughs> oh, we're, we're gonna be I'm there elephant. with you, brother, you know, I'm there. I was thinking maybe like... Three worth of elephant meat right there. I was thinking like a, a giant Jitsum in the Traveler t-shirt, you know? I was thinking like graffitiing the side of the elephant. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Just, with just some of the, like oh crudely, crudely, <laughs> like this is really bad. Yeah, I was thinking, like, it's like I just one, got a pet elephant and right. like giant yard. It plays with my dogs. I teach it how to paint. It picks up trash. You know, like <laughs> all the elephant videos you see on YouTube. No, you know. big ass George Foreman <laughs> girl. <laughs> Silas. <laughs> Grab ton of, of day one. You know what? The just, whole world. Welcome to Top Chef with Silas William Alexander. And today we're cooking <laughs> bound elephant burgers. Yeah, the whole world is going to know. Shout out like, to the ETX Rock Show for giving us yeah. this elephant. Yeah, this is <laughs> 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 All right, guys. So that was What the Heck with uh, oh with Gypsum and the Travelers. Good job, you guys. Okay, so you guys are actually going to play another song for us. So tell us a little bit about this this song. I really love this one, by the way. So, um, Taylor, it's T-A-I-L-O-R, um, and it's essentially, at this time in my life, I had, um, my best friend who, uh, I just so happened to be in love with, and his name was Taylor. Sorry, bud, if you ever see this. Um, anyways, we're not friends anymore, but this song is about him, and I also, I had this hairdresser, um, that was really into fashion. And I was just like, how do I connect these two things? You know, Taylor and, and Taylor's. Oh my God, I did it. And so essentially it's just me trying to convey to him, hey, you're important to me. I want to be important to you too. And like do that. Um, so the song's just kind of really heartfelt and just solely from my perspective, like um, he was just my best friend and didn't want anything else. And I was fighting for something more so hard yeah. and it just wasn't going to work. And this honestly, when I wrote this song, this was at the end of our friendship. And so it just went from there and I wrote it, sent it to him. And then we talked for a few days after that. And I haven't heard from him since June. So. Shame on you, Taylor. <clears throat> this will be a number one hit someday. <laughs> and then it's too late. It's just too late for you by then. 
But, yeah, we, we had a lot of fun times and a lot of good memories, <clears throat> and he taught me a lot. But at the end of the day, like, honestly, I hate to – I don't hate to say this, actually. I'm really glad he's gone because okay. I've been able to move forward so much. Well, I love this song because there's a lot of different styles melding into mm -hmm. the collective – goal of the song I yeah think. it's really cool because one the song is is it what is it an analogy or it's just like this it's just this big old <coughs> big old english just full of jumble stuff hidden like, meanings everywhere like seriously like everything means something but you're not going to know exactly what it means <clears throat> right. um so I really like every time somebody's like, "Hey, can you play this song?" I'm like, "Yeah, but can I explain to you literally what everything means?" Because <clears throat> it's just this song really. Um, it's saying everything I need to say without saying it. Right. And I just, I love this song so much. Cool. So you guys check this out. This is Taylor by Gypsum and the Traveler. Alright, so that was Taylor uh, by Gypsum and the Traveler. Really enjoyed that song. I think that's a really good, going to be a really good one for y'all. And um, so I have one last question for you guys. And a lot of times this can be the hardest question to answer on this show. So um, good luck with it. The, the question is, who is Gypsum and the Travelers? Or who are Gypsum and the Travelers? For me, Gypsum and the Travelers is your everyday people. And Chris said that, or, or it's, you both said that. Um, at some point, Silas and Chris, um, when I decided what I wanted to write, like, and as a whole, I wanted to talk to the majority of the people that have been through it, that yeah. have seen it, that, that, you know, and also know what it's like to come out the other side, just like life in general. And, um, I wanted to create this group that people looked to and they were like, oh my God 
the, these people, they've been there and they sing about it. They play about it. They, they want to, you know, everybody shares like how they can get drugs and money and nice cars and all of this stuff. Well, that's not real world mm -hmm. at all. That's, that's the elites, you know, they can, they can afford like nice houses and vacations and all of that. Us, we're just like working class people <clears throat> that can't, you know, we can't we can't even afford to take off work for a sick day you know and yeah, i was gonna say like i worked 41 hours last week yeah so i mean so broke that when you go to the like the atm receipt has a coupon for ramen it's, on the back yeah of it. it's so bad like <laughs> we, and and i'm constantly especially i'm telling my boyfriend this because he's like wow you're so cool i'm like no I'm like a regular person. I am just like anybody else. Right. And so are the rest of us. We literally, like, there's there's nothing that makes us special. Like, we are just like the rest of the people out there. And I want to create music that feeds that. I, I'm like, I mean, I guess I kind of want to be the Robin Hood of the music industry. And I want to, like, speak to the masses. Because, you know, the people with all the money, you know, and the elites, there's... We could overthrow those guys in a day. Yeah. Like, oh my God, if we band together and actually like spoke our viewpoints and like, my biggest thing is, you know, how to represent ourselves in a healthy manner to where we're not burning down buildings and we're peacefully like protesting <laughs> being the lower class yeah. um, in a very constructive way that not only helps ourselves, but it helps other people get through what everybody else is going through. Very so cool. um, Gypsum and the Traveler, we're just everyday people doing what we love and having fun doing it. So Awesome. So if people are hearing about y'all for the very first time, where can they follow along with the journey? Um, we are on Facebook, um, Gypsum and the Traveler. Uh, travelers, plural. Sorry, guys. Uh, and then we are on Instagram. Again, Gypsum and the Travelers. Um, I don't have a Twitter. I don't plan on getting a Twitter because it's just too much to come up with and do stuff with unless one of these guys want to handle that. So, but that's where we're at. You can also find us on YouTube um, and then our individual pages that we have, which are linked to the um, Facebook and the um, Instagram accounts. So if you find a picture of us, there they'll be tagged in it. And so you can follow all of us individually um, and friend, friend us on Facebook. Just, you have to kind of search for it, but yeah. And uh, again, it's, it's Jewel Renee, it's Nate McConnell, Chris French, Silas William Alexander, <laughs> and uh, together they are Gypsum and the Travelers, and I'm going to spell that out for everybody. It's G Y P S U M, Gypsum and the Travelers, um, on Facebook and Instagram, and they all have their individual Instagrams as well that you can find under their given names, um, which I just named. All right, so guys, we want to thank you for tuning in to episode 226 once again with Gypsum and the Travelers. First time on the ETX Rock Show. Definitely want to thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Thank you. Um, and again, good. when you guys have new music and stuff and you're ready to get into the studio, we'd love to have you back. Oh, yeah. Always an open invite with us. So thank you. Just let us know when you have big stuff going on. We'll have you back. If you're hearing about the ETX Rock Show for the first time, we would love for y'all to follow along with us as well on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're located at ETX Rocks. <laughs> Please subscribe to us on YouTube. This is a big thing, guys. We need your help on YouTube. YouTube has changed their partner program to where we need to have a 1,000 subscriptions now um, or we're going to lose some very needed features on YouTube. We have until February 20th to do that. So please hit that subscribe button. That'll help us out a lot. Hit the like button, too, if you like what we have going on here. Um, also, our funding depends entirely on our audience, people like you out there. If you'd like to donate to the ETX Rock Show, you can do so at paypal.me forward slash ETX Rocks, and we definitely appreciate your help there. As we always say on this show, we want to thank you guys out there for always supporting live music of all genres and all styles, and don't ever forget, ETX Rocks! That's right. Howdy folks, this is Aaron Watson. This is Bree Bagwell. This is Jake. And this is Walter from Rocky Queen. This is Curtis Grimes. I'm Monty Pittman. This is Doug Supernon. I'm Heather Riddle. And this is Rob Redwine. Ho! Oh, hey, folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Hey, guys, I'm Katie Lynn. And make sure to tune in to ETX Rocks with Boston Chris. Hello, y'all. This is Ronnie Millsap. And thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rocks show. Tough guy. Ho! Oh! Hey guys, we're Blacktop Mojo, and thank you for tuning in to ETX Rocks.